If you've been using MongoDB in your C-sharp applications, there's guaranteed been a time where you've inserted some data and said, man, I wish I could go update that. And fortunately for you, you can, because the APIs that we have access to with the MongoDB C-sharp driver are very straightforward. Hi, my name is Nick Cosentino, and I'm a principal software engineering manager at Microsoft. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through some of the very simple APIs that we have to use with the MongoDB C-sharp driver for updating records. We're going to see how we can filter on the right things and make sure that we're updating what we want. This is geared for beginners trying to get started with using MongoDB and C-sharp, so we're not gonna look at very advanced techniques here. A quick reminder to check that pinned comment for a link to my free weekly newsletter and my courses that are available on Dome Train. Let's head over to Visual Studio and check out the code. All right, so the first entire part that I'm highlighting here is code to get set up with MongoDB and C-sharp and make sure that we can connect and be able to filter on things. And I'm highlighting this because I've created previous videos that will walk you through this. You can check that out now, come back, and then this might make a little bit more sense. Or quickly, just to explain, we start off with an empty filter, and we're just combining that empty filter with a filter that's going to match when a name property on a document is equal to my name. This could easily be replaced by this line here on line 20 without the empty filter but I like breaking it out when I'm writing more complex filters. Now, what's new compared to those other videos is this update builder, but we create this in a very similar way. So we ask this builder static class for the update class, and then we store that into this update builder variable. Again, this assignment is not necessary, but if you're using more update builder calls here, instead of calling that static class many times, we can just call it once, and in my opinion, it makes the code a little bit easier to use instead of repeating this a handful of times. In this example, we're only going to be looking at calling set on one property, so we're going to change the name from Nick Cosentino to Dev Leader. Now, at this point, we're not actually calling the update anywhere, so I just wanted to show you how we structure this. So this is going to find the records that we want to update, and this is how we want to update them. So two different parts, right? We need to pass this into something else, which I'll show you in just a moment. But before I do, I wanted to show you Compass, where this data is. I'm gonna refresh the data. And inside, you can see that I have this collection that has three items inside of it. There's three that all have name as Nick Cosentino. And that's important because when we go to call this method, we should be able to see what's happening. So the example code that I have here from line 25 to 34 is calling update one. Update one is taking in that filter that we created and the update method that we created from the update builder. Again, filter is picking which objects or documents we want to go update and update is explaining how we want to go update them. But something very important that I want you to note is that this method is called update one called update one, but we have three documents that are going to match this filter that I created, right? All three documents had the name Nick Cosentino. So in the previous videos that I've created, especially where I was talking about deleting, we want to make sure that when we're filtering, we're filtering accordingly. So make sure your filter matches. And if you don't want to just update one, but you want to update more than one because your filter is supposed to update more than one, We'll see that in just a moment. So when I go run this, we should be able to see the result of it on the console, and we can see that it matched one and modified one. That comes back as part of the result when we call that update one method. So if we jump back over to compass, if I refresh this data, you can see that that first one, the name changed to dev leader. The other two are untouched, right? They still say name is Nick Cosentino. And yes, all three technically match the filter, but only the first one was updated because as we called update one. Of course, if we want to go change this around a little bit, we can call update many. And instead of just updating the single record, it should update all of them that match the filter. At this point though, two of them match the filter and one of them is already updated to say dev leader. So if I go run this now, we should see the correct counts come up. So two, right? There's two things that were updated here. That's good news. If we go back over to Compass, if I refresh this, note the names are still Nick Cosentino, but when I refresh, they go to dev leader now. So that means that we were able to update multiple records calling the right method. And a quick note, right? I didn't change these two things at all. All that I did was change the method from update one to update many. Filter and update calls, scrap that. 
filter and update objects were left unchanged, just the method changed. Okay, building on a more complex example here, if we were calling update many, which could affect multiple documents as we just saw, if we wanted to still make sure that we could update only a single record, if we could pick the ID that we wanted to work with, we could go target that one specifically. In this particular case, it would probably make more sense to use update one, but I just wanted to show you that when you're filtering properly, and in this case, picking a specific document with this exact ID, we could in fact update it regardless of update many or update one. Again, this is probably not the right method you want to use. I just want to illustrate that this can filter down based on what your filter definition is up here. When we go run this, it should only go touch one record. And just to show you, I have this first record in here. This is the ID that we're working with. And you'll note too that this is new object ID. So this is built into MongoDB to give us this object identifier. But I'm also starting with a new empty filter. Just please note that I'm not redeclaring it. I'm just reassigning it, both the filter and the update. So this one should set the name to very special for that first record. All right, heading back over to Compass, we can see that this one that has the ID that we were referring to right here has had the name updated to very special. And just to show you, if I move this down out of the way, we can see this ends in 5975 right here. And this one in Compass also ends with the same thing. So it only updated that one. If we look at the other th two records here, they're still left untouched. I'll refresh and you can see same thing, right? Name is updated to very special only for that one despite using update many. And before moving on, I just wanted to take a quick note to show you my dome train courses that I have available now. I do have two that are focused on C sharp, which you can see right here and right here. So we have a getting started and a deep dive course. The getting started one is perfect for people that haven't even programmed before. I'll teach you all the basics you need to get up and running and working with C sharp. And the deep dive builds directly on top of that so that you have more experience working with C sharp and you feel a lot more capable working with the language to go develop applications. Together, both of these courses are just around 11 and a half hours of all of the basics of C sharp that you'll need to get up and running. Of course, building on top of all of that, I have my refactoring course that's available. And this is going to teach you different methods that you can use to refactor code, clean up your code base, and make sure that you're not trapped working with spaghetti legacy code. If you like the style of my YouTube videos and the way that I teach, I think these courses will be perfect for you. Okay, and for our final example, we're going to look at one more method called find one and update. This one's really cool because we're able to update a particular record. Again, it's find one. So make sure that your filter is only matching one or else you might have some unintended side effects here. So in this case, I'm using this same type of filter that's going to match the exact ID. So this is the proper use of updating one. And the difference with this find one and update is that we're going to get that result given back to us before it was updated. Another difference here is I'm just changing the name so we can keep track of it. It's going to change it to dev leader rocks. Let's go ahead and run this. And you'll note that what's printed out to the console is the object that we were targeting, right? The one that ended in 5975. The name used to be very special. Right, that's not what we just updated it to. It's what the value was before we updated it. Just an important note. So that means if I go back to Compass, if I refresh this, right, we're looking at this first record here that ends in 5975. If I refresh, that got updated to Dev Leader Rocks. And again, going back to the console, this is what the record used to be, where it said very special for the name. And of course, now the name is Dev Leader Rocks. So find one and update in the code here is giving you that value back before it updates it. So we have a handful of different ways that we can update records for MongoDB from C Sharp. And we got to see updating a single record, updating multiple, and then updating one, but also getting that reference back to the object before we updated it. But in this video series so far, if you've watched the previous ones up until now, we haven't really talked about performance or benchmarks at all. So if you're interested in learning more about that, when those videos are ready, you can check them out here. Thanks and I'll see you next time.